We're busy looking at elementary matrices. In the first part, we saw how to what an elementary matrix is and how to calculate an elementary matrix, how to find it, and its inverse. So let's look at some properties and theorems linked to elementary matrices. The first one is an equivalence theorem, which is quite a powerful theorem. It tells me if I've got an n by n matrix, all these following statements are equivalent, meaning if one of them is true, the rest are true. If one is false, the rest is false. So what have we got? My matrix A is invertible if and only if the matrix equation AX equal to 0 has only the trivial solution. And that happens if and only if the row reduced echelon form of A is the identity matrix. And that happens if and only if A is expressible as a product of elementary matrices. So these are all equivalent statements. So if I know one is true, I know all the others are true, which is very powerful. Now, this theorem builds and grows as you do more work on matrices. So there's more numbers added later to show to, that are equivalent. All right, I'm not going to prove them in this section. But we must be aware of this. Next one, looking at determinants of elementary matrices. If I've got an elementary matrix and I've found it by multiplying a row of i n by k, then the determinant of that elementary matrix is just k. Remember, the determinant of i n is 1. Whatever n is, the determinant of my identity matrix is 1. So if I multiply a row of that by k, I get the elementary matrix E and the determinant of E is equal to K. If E results from interchanging two rows of I n, then the determinant of E is minus one. And you can check that. And if E results from adding a multiple of one row to another, that determinant does not change. So those are some properties of determinants of E. And then that gets us to the next theorem. So yet again, I'm not going through the proofs of the theorems, but these are pretty powerful theorems. Firstly, the determinant of E times the matrix B is the determinant of E times the determinant of B, which makes sense if you think of previous other properties we have of determinants. So you can look at that. So we need that to get to the last theorem on this page, but we'll get there shortly. The other very powerful one is a is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. Now, we need the elementary matrices to prove that. That's why it's only introduced here. But that can be added to our equivalence theorem. We can say the determinant of A is non-zero. That's one. There's more additions. The more you study matrices, but that's one addition. So if A is invertible, the determinant of A is non-zero. And then the last theorem, theorem here is the determinant of A times B. If they're the right sizes, it's just the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And that gets us to our last property, is if A is an invertible matrix, then the determinant of A inverse is 1 divided by the determinant of A. So let's just quickly substantiate that. We're not going to formally prove that. But if I look at the fact that A is invertible, we might as well prove it. A is invertible then I know two things. I know the determinant of A is non-zero, and I also know that A inverse exists because it's invertible. So we can say, then I know A times A inverse will give me the identity matrix. So the determinant of A times A inverse must give me the determinant of the identity matrix. Now I know the determinant of the identity matrix is just one, and our previous theorem said that a determinant of A times the determinant of A inverse, or determinant of A times A inverse, is the determinant of A times the determinant of A inverse. And from here we can see that the determinant of A inverse is then equal to 1 divided by the determinant of A. Now we can only do that because we know the determinant is non-zero. So that is needed to show this. So if you've got... A matrix that's invertible, you've got its determinant, then you can calculate the determinant of the inverse very quickly. But let's look at more elementary matrices. If I've got this matrix A here, let's write it as a product of elementary matrices, and let's write A inverse as a product of elementary matrices. So we know we're going to need Gaussian elimination. So 1 minus 3, 4 minus 5. 
So our first step will be to get a zero over there. So we're going to take row two and add minus four row one to it. So I get one minus three, zero, and then I get minus four is 12, minus five is seven. All right, next step, I need my leading one. So I take row two and I multiply it with one over seven. One minus three, zero, one. And my last step, I take row one and I add a multiple of row two, which multiple three times row two to get a zero there. Zero, one, one, zero. So those are the three operations I've done. So we know we're going to generate three elementary matrices, E1, E2, and E3. And then we know that A times E1 times E2 times E3 will give me the identity matrix. From there, we'll get E1, E2, and E3. We need them, but while we're on a roll, from there we can say that A inverse is E3 times E2 times E1. So when we're asked to write A and A inverse as a product of elementary matrices, A inverse comes out first. But then we get A is then E1 inverse times E2 inverse times E3 inverse. So we know what our elementary row operations were. We just need E1, E2, E3, and their inverses. So let's go. E1. It's going to be a 2 by 2 matrix performing this first row operation on the identity matrix. So that gives me 1, 0, minus 4, 1. E2 is the second elementary row operation. Perform that on the identity and you get zero, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1 over 7. And E3 is the third operation. And that gives us 1, 3, 0, 1. So A1 is E3 times E2 times E1. So I've written A1. Of A1, A inverse, I've written A inverse as a product of elementary matrices. For A, I need the inverses of these matrices, E1 inverse, E2 inverse, and E3 inverse. What do they look like? E1 inverse, well, the opposite operation will be adding four times row one. So it'll be one, zero, four, one. E2 inverse, multiplying with a seven rather than one over seven. So it's one, zero, zero, seven. And E3 inverse, minus 3. So it's 1, minus 3, naught 1. So I can write A as a product of matrices. And please remember, you can test this. So if you practice this technique, you can test it. Go multiply E1 inverse with E2 inverse and E3 inverse and check that you get A. It's a good way to check that your calculations are correct. And that is elementary matrices.